Hey guys, welcome to my channel and the rapid fire elemental sorcerer build. And yes, the BVB build is here as I promised, but let's save the best for the last. Uber Lilith build is coming soon. Today, we will go deeper into analyzing the build with question and answer, BVB builds, eternal rim build, and alternative builds such as no unique or only power. Before going into a deeper analysis, since this build relies 50% on Hydra damage, and there is a bug with Hydra that the burning damage of Hydra scaled with the level of most. It means Hydra burning damage is much slower than all the builds at Nightmare 30, but then they start becoming comparable at 70. So Hydra actually does lower them over time in PvP and Uber Lilith. But we use all the aspects of the sorcerer kit with uh, burning damage, Tarasa for all elements, vulnerable, frozen, stun, CC, attack speed, and its interaction, movement speed, critical chance, critical damage, claw damage. So we can adjust from the conjuration damages to core damages if it really impacts us after Hydra effects. To demonstrate the speed of all nightmare tiers. I put this video into 7 sections with our Nightmare 100, Nightmare 77, Nightmare 45, Nightmare 100 with our Unix, Nightmare 100 Eternal Rim, Nightmare 100 Only Power version, and PvP. If you are interested in any section, please jump to the section for the explanation. Now, let's begin our analysis. First, we talk about the strength of this build. We have attack speed, elemental damages, dam over time, defensive, and movement speed. We will talk about the attack speed first. This is the most crucial part of this build, and here's how we max it out. Clove, 15%. Accelerating aspect, 25%. Amulet of Ancient Flame, 75%. Paragon Point, 5%. Unstable Current, 25%. Heady Assault Elixir Potion, 25% optional. Total is 165 attack speed. But remember, the cap is 150, so without the potion, we reach 145 attack speed, which is nearly the maximum. With 150 attack speed and 1.2 attacks per second from one hand weapon, it is 1.2 multiplied by 2.5 equals 3 attacks per second. It's very fast. As super city works with any damage that's crit. So a crit from chain lightning kills a mob or hitting a boss will trigger 75% attack speed. The lightning build is famous by its critical chance and with barber hurt, it ensures you killing enemies with a critical strike. You can see that I just use chain lightning in a player and a player is counted as elite as well. When chain lightning kills the player, we have 75% attack speed buff. I want to point out that a super city doesn't work when hitting elite or player like a boss to correct this mistake that I mentioned in the last video. So when you are near the group of mobs, your attack speed is insane, so this build doesn't work with PvP one on one. I will talk more about PvP builds later. We have a question. Is there a limit on how many Hydra that you can have active from the enchant? The answer is that you can have a maximum of 2 Hydra from the enchantment. The Hydra enchantment spawns one more Hydra every 200 mana. Serpentide aspect works with the enchantment as well, so it can raise one more Hydra for the enchantment if you spend another 200 mana. Your attack speed is 3 attacks per second, so this view we can cast 2 Hydra and 3 chain lightning per second. 20 mana cost for the Hydra skill, plus 35 mana cost from the chain line equal 145 mana per second. With 3 seconds, you can cast up to 435 mana, which spawns 2 Hydra from the enchantment, plus 2 active Hydra from the skill, so you can have total of 4 active Hydra. For Frozen Orb enchantment, you have 30% to trigger a Frozen Orb with an attack. With 3 attacks per second, you have more chance to launch a frozen orb per second with freeze enemies and make them vulnerable very frequently. With the mana span, using Heart of Conflated could trigger 100% stun the whole time. It's the best replacement for Raymond and also the best Heart in PvP with 
I will cover later in the BVB section. Second, talking about the movement speed, the Acolos activates Esuhalum event effects, increasing movement speed by 75%, with Esu Boot Elite kill movement speed buff, flame seal skills, and production passive. This keeps you constantly at 100% movement speed, adding a 30% physical change on the fight. It also makes you fly through the whole dungeon at an impressive speed. The Lightning build is well known for its critical change. With a colors, it leads to a 75% critical change in the whole fight. 3. Elemental Damages For Sorcerers, the damage is from multiple elements, and the total damage is calculated by multiplying the damage value of each of the damage markers. We finally can trigger them all as Fire, Lightning, Cold, Shadow Element, Tau Russia, Hurt, Stun, Shields, Close, Burning, Ground Control, Vulnerable, Crystal Chains, Duration, and Attack Speed. In this build, we have all. For example, Total Damage from Hydra equal Base Damage multiplied by Intelligent Bucket, multiplied by Duration Bucket, multiplied by Taurasa Bucket, multiplied by Shield Bucket, multiplied by Close Bucket, multiplied by Burning Bucket, multiplied by Brow Control Bucket, multiplied by Critical Bucket, multiplied by Attack Speed, which can be very huge from where the base damage. Let's do a quick summary before going into details. Fire Burning. We have 4 Hydra, which is 4 Head multiplied by 2, and Seed Head multiplied by 2 equals 20 Head, which can burn 20 enemies at the same time. Lining from Gen Lining and Teleport and Oculus Teleport and Stable Torrent. You can catch many Lining. Cold, Chills, Frozen, Vulnerable. Mostly from Frozen Off, which is 1 per second. Shadow, Vapor Hurt. Stun, Lining Spear, Oculus plus Teleport, Hurt of Calculated in PvP. Close, you engage with Teleport. Critical damage, 75% critical chance, and amplified Hydra burning. Route control, from multiple source. Shields, Frozen, Stun. For defensive, let's do a quick summary before going into details. The key is that we keep using a close Teleport. Based on the stats of Max Roll, you can have all damage reduction, 10.7%. Dam reduction from Elite, 15.4%. Dam reduction from Burning, 38%. Simmering Teleport Passive, 30%. Earth of Revenge, 20%. Mana Seal Skill, 21%. Total is 135%. 15% less damage when lining Critical Shrug. Blood 25 less damage from Speedy Vulnerable. 7000 Armor, 4500 Seal. If you still have a defensive problem, you can change the frame feature clip to frostbite clip to have 13% reduced damage after being frozen. Check my max roll for the details. Now let's go through the equipment, skill 3 and paragon to see how it works. Note, check my max roll built in the description for the best stats. So I will just talk about the aspects and help through my items. I'm just a casual player, so my item don't have the recommended stats. We have an ammo aspect for the helmet like everyone does. More ammo means more damage reduction. You can watch the analysis in the description as well. We have Raymond for the chest. If you are looking for the alternative pieces, please skip to the Nightmare 100 without unique section. Teleport. Raymond, a colors is a sick combo that I will talk about in the mana and combo section below. In the clothes, we have two times more explosion from frozen up aspects. You can watch the analysis in screen to see why we have this result. Chance of releasing a frozen up per attack is 30%. Number of attacks per second is 3. So there is a 67 0.71% uh, change that enemies will be vulnerable in any given second. 
considering the stack and extension of the vulnerabilities by two seconds if reapplied. But with attacking so fast, enemies are frozen all the time, with causes up to 100% vulnerable per second when they are hit by a frozen orb. We have three damage reduction from the pants, plus one all stars to help unlock nodes from Baragon Port. Together with the ever living aspect, it is 100% triggered from stun, chilled, frozen, and vulnerable. We have a permanent 25% damage reduction as well. Frozen Oz help us all for this. Raymond and Lightning Spear also helps. As to Hulumt for the boot, which is we analyze for contributing up to 100% movement speed and 30% critical chance for free. And yes, you can buff more than 30% critical chance from Asu Halum. Here I have 34%. Oculus plus protection passive. The unique teleporting skill from the Oculus pairs beautifully with the protection passive, ensuring you always have 30% health as a barrier plus 30% damage reduction from the simmering teleport passive. Aspect of Ancient Flame on the Amulet. This is top 1 priority in our build. As I said, as soon ferocity works with any damage that crits. The Barber Hurt is here, as this is the season of Barber Hurt. You can replace it with any. Go to Nightmare 100 Omni Power Version section for Omni Power Hurt, or go to Nightmare 100 Eternal Rim section for the Non Hurt version. I have two amulets here. Which one for offensive and one for defensive? I usually switch depending on the situation. I usually use the defensive one for Nightmare 100. For the rings, I have recharging aspect and second Hydra aspect. Baba Hurt also causes shadow damage, which triggers four elements in the Tower Russia Hurt, which increase 1.12 to the power of 4 equal 1.57. Heart of Revenge gives you more damage reduction. The Aculus also triggers 250% fire damage to this heart as well. Last, the accelerating aspect in the focus boosts 25% attack speed when critical striking and we crit the whole time with gen lining. Now, let's go through the skill tree. We have two points in basic skill to unlock the next tiers. Now we are in core skill, we need to unlock all Frozen Orb and Gen Lining passive. Frozen Orb will help you to shield, frozen, and vulnerable. Gen Lining will help you to critical strike and generate cracking energy to regain mana. In defensive skill, we need to upgrade full teleport to unlock teleport cooldown and 30% damage reduction. It pairs very well with our colors, making you so tanky. We need Flame Seal to cheat that situation since we are almost in melee range all the time. And we need its enhanced passive for 25% movement speed buff to boost the grid chain up as to Harlem boot. One point for the class cannon, so we have one spare point. Next, in Conjuration skill, we need to max out Hydra for its damage. Lining Spear could help you to stun the enemies, and with a 75% critical change, it is a permanent stun. For Consuration Mastery passive, it is very important as we constantly have 5 Consuration and up to 13 when using ultimate skill with boost 15 to 39% attack damage. Mana Steel skill give you a 21% damage reduction when spending 100 mana. I think we spend more than that. LOL. Protection passive. As we said, it pairs very well with our colors. With this attack speed, we have like unlimited jumps from the colors. So you will always have 30% shield and 30% damage reduction. Now we go to the mastery skills. We need Devouring Blaze because it buff critical damage, which we really need. We also need in Involve Invigorating Conduit for Mana Regain. This is very important for this build. In the Ultimate skill, we need Unstable Current and its attack speed passive. With this attack speed, you can spawn 10 Lighting Spears very easily, 
which stun the whole screen. Auto target very big consideration damage and buff 10 multiplied by 3% from consideration mastery passive equal 50% increased damage. We need conduction passive for buff movement speed and critical change. Also, we need the electrocution passive to be more tanky, a free 15% less damage when lining critical truck. Last but not least, a super velocity skill, which is the main focus of this build to trigger 75% attack speed on the amulet aspect. For the enchantments, we have the frozen up skill, as it has a 30% chance to be triggered with any skill, which is very overpowered without rapid fire, as I said in the previous talks. We have another slot for hydra skill, as I said before. Now, let's go through the Paragon bots. We start with a Conjurer Clip, which is our main damage. You can start it when you hit level 50. We have a question. What build do you suggest for level 50 plus to gather items before you transition into your build? I would recommend Chain Lining plus Fireball to level 50 and start this build as soon as you reach level 50. The Conjurer Clip is insane, so with the Paragon Balls, you try to unlock many clip slots as soon as possible and then invest in the Legendary Node later when you reach level 100. The next board is the Enchantment Master board with the Enchanted Clip. Since we don't have enough items expect in the 50th level, this board and clip contribute more damage without requiring any items. The next board is Elemental Summoner and Flame Feeder. This board includes 5 attack speed buff, 16 mana buff, and 6 north of consideration damages, which contributes a very big damage to our consideration damage bucket. Thanks for David's comment. He points out that we can switch the flame feed the clip with the frostbite cliff. If you have a problem with defensive and killing mobs, as frostbite would add 160 damage to shield enemies and 13% damage reduction for 5 seconds from post frozen enemies. However, Flame Feed the Clip at 67% multiplied by 10% damage. So it is up to you if you want to trade 80% for bosses and unstoppable elites. I put Frostbite Paragon board in the alternative Paragon and non units item build in the Max Roll link. The next board is the Burning Instinct board with a Destruction Clip. This board contributes a big spike to the end game which is around level 90 to 95, as it isn't worth it in the beginning when we don't have enough items and good stats for it. The trust and cleave by itself contributes 97% critical damage, multiplied by 12 increased damage, which is very huge with our 75% critical chance build. This spot also has a lot of big numbers in damage and damage reduction on burning enemies. It also has a safeguard node, which give 13% damage reduction with elites. And Burning Instinct Legendary Node, which increases our burning damage based on critical try damage and intelligence, which is our two highest stars in our build. For myself, I have 380% increased damage, but you can have up to 420%. It's a very huge number. The last board is Static Search with Control Cliff. You need to prioritize the static search legendary node for 10 mana on stunning. This board increases a very big spike on CC damages at the late game. You can see a loss of damage on stun, rail control, and elite enemies here. This is the gameplay that I made the same build without hurt, and it's going fine, so you can play it well in the non season. Although the clearing speed is 2.5 times slower, I changed the flame fitter clip to frostbite cliff in this version to improve both the clearing mob speed and survivability. You can check this in the max roll link in the description. Now let's continue our leftover analysis. We have a question. Why no Exploit Cliff though? I thought it was one of the best for damage. Exploit Cliff gives you 34% vulnerable damage, 
wounded by my 10% increased damage. Artifacts give you 75% to 130%, so I believe that the exploit clip isn't as good as others, but it should be a very good source on Uber Lilith. We have another question, but doesn't vulnerable being its own damage bucket make it way more powerful but percentage added? For example, 40% vulnerable damage is like 160% cold damage. It is actually 34% vulnerable damage multiplied by 10 increased damage multiplied by 67.72% chance that enemies will be vulnerable in any given second compared to 100% chance burning multiplied by 67.3% burning damage multiplied by 10% increased damage or 75% crit change multiplied by 97 crit damage multiplied by 12 increased damage or 85.8% all damage which I don't think that exploit cliff is worth investing in we have some vulnerable stuff from the ring to cover it 5 damage over time. High critical damage from lightning builds not only boosts our damage but also amplifies our Hydra burning damage from Burning Instinct Legendary Node. With 4 active Hydra and 150% attack speed, enemies melt before you. 6 mana and combo. With such a fast attack speed, you will run out of mana very fast. With 2.5 to 3 mana with recharging aspect, blood invigorating on due skill, a static search button, it will keep you at a healthy mana state, like my gameplays. But if you cannot find recharging aspect with 2.5 to 3 mana, I have three options. A. Learn how to master the combo. B. Use the hurt of the dark dance. If you don't mind to trade mana for defensive, feel free to do so. Using the Heart of the Calculated. For this one, please jump to the Nightmare 100 with our unique section for the explanation. We need to use this one as well in the BVB for both stunning and mana regen. Now, let's learn the combo with the Triple S Storm. I will remove the ring with the recharging aspect completely to demonstrate. First, you will cast two Hydra with spamming three chain lining to have zero mana completely. And then using teleport to jump into with stun enemies and recharge mana. It also picks up cracking energy nearby with also gain more mana. For its two to three seconds, or when losing the shield, we use the Oculus to regenerate the shield. You will have a 30% shield and 30% damage reduction each time you use teleport and Oculus jump. So you must keep doing it. When your teleport has 3 seconds cooldown, which is more than enough to re jump into the enemies, remember to always use teleport to jump in, not jump out. You have Oculus to help you jump out. Also, keeping flame shield to Keep that situation so you don't need to jump out at all. Remember that teleport is the only way to keep you in the correct position. So save it when you are in really bad position of Oculus usage. There is some SK that you jump out too far and there is no teleport left. Just walk into cracking energy to regain mana and hit and run into crack and cracking energy for 1 to 3 seconds while teleport is on cooldown. When you are near the enemies, the cracking energy spawns very close to you, so it's auto collected and it also helps you to gain mana as well. Just keep doing melee when teleport is out of mana. 7. Question and Answer First, we have a question from Polis. 9817. Is this stronger than Classio Spice for Max Roll? There is no stronger between builds. It's up to your style and references and luck on year job. I would recommend sticking to one build that you like most and switching to another to feel the differences when you have enough gears. It help you to experience the game the most. Classio Spike is still the strongest one in Super Lily. We have another question from Superfly. Is there a limit on how many Hydra you can have active 
from the enchant else you may try stacking max mana and use omni power to get a massive mana of hydra elf you can have maximum two hydra from the enchantment omni power is great you can check my omni power game later in this video we have a question do you have an eternal build barber will be gone after this season yes please go to nightmare 100 eternal rim section we have another question as i'm just curious as to why you are not running sapphires on your main and offhand in self emerald especially since you are not using the exploit clip i figure enemies are cc more frequently than they are vulnerable although it really matter there is a 67.71 percent chance that enemies will be vulnerable in any given set considering the stack and extension of the vulnerability by two seconds if pre apply but with attacking so fast enemy frozen all the times with causes up to 100% vulnerable per second when they are hit by a frozen orb so Sapphire is actually one of our main damage exploit cliff is great for bosses especially uber Lilith, but it only adds 34% vulnerable damage multiplied by 10% damage compared to other cliff which are all more than 80% up to 160% just Sasura doesn't have any good vulnerable in Fremonto source this is the version of Omni Power Hut you can check the max roll link in the description for the details because we need to stay in close range for all the gen linings hitting enemies so we need tankier and more aoe damage than barbara's version i swap flame fit the cliff to frostbite cliff and adjust some mana point in the paragon and skill tree to so take less than one million gold to switch to this there isn't any much difference in this build except we have more looking power which i think is the best for 1v1 pvp now let's continue our leftover analysis we have another question from bro ph 2095 one did you ever consider rare armor with four damage reduction modifications and then swapping cage of revenge for the one that stun enemies for four to five seconds when you spend 150 mana i love the concept of oculus plus raymond but I feel with the random teller of colors, it can also result in no stun if it's teller you away from mobs. 2. Pause on spreading elemental board 2 nodes to get the leg node. Might be able to drop mana cost reduction on focus if gen lighting doesn't end up too high. So one extra affix there. Plus reduce lighting sphere cooldown time an extra 10%. Then of course the hydra mana cost reduction. For the question 1, I use your suggestion in my alternative paragon non unique item view. Please check the max roll link and jump to Nightmare 100 with our unique section for the explanation. For the random position of the colors, we go back to the mana combo section. I still feel we need the mana cost reduction on focus as we still are in mana hungry sometimes, but if you don't, please drop it. For the question 2, this is Buck before, uh, I just fix it. Another question Why no exploit cliff though? I thought this was one of the best for damage. Also, extra gen lighting balance aspect, not worth it. Also, what do you think about running the aspect that gives you a gen of specific effect? I guess everything died too fast. We already discussed about the exploit cliff before, as it is good, but as good as order, still very good on Uber Lilith. I don't have a slot for gen lighting bells and spreading city effects. They should be the alternative to replace the Unix items. Please check my alternative Paragon non Unix item build. Another question. Hey Darren, I still find myself running out of mana at higher level Nightmare Dungeon. Is it better to run Broad DG aspect versus Gen Bolt? Because we basically have unlimited teleport with our colors. 
you need 2.5 to 3 mana on recharging aspect to feel mana comfortable. Otherwise, go back to my mana combo section. By the way, a close teleport doesn't work with broad dodgy aspect. We have this question. Can the switch C from tier 80 and up? Each Raymond is a must because stun mana or for damage reduction check character. If you keep using Oculus Teleport with my build, you are fine. Please go back to my 4 tankiness section. You can switch to Frostburn Cliff as I say in the tankiness section. Raymond isn't a must. You can check my alternative build section later. Another question. Have you tried Uber Lilith with this build? Yes, but it's not as good as Blizzard 1. I will post it soon next week. I'm curious if you're able to find Lilith with this build. I would assume the Oculus random teleporting would get you killed easily. I switched to more damage with Iron Front from Conjurer Lilith build. I changed Oculus staff to crit damage, vulnerable, intelligent, burning damage staff with Stormwell aspect. Replace Lightning Spear to Ice Blade. O attack amulet damage, rank O conjuration, conjuration master passive, conjuration damage. We have this question. What about conjuration skill and devouring blaze? Will it increase crit damage for Hydra? Also, we are giving up aspect of control. Is there any way we can slot it in? Or it is not important for this build? Yeah, they are also great. The priority should be conjuration master passive, conjuration skill, devouring blaze. Damage, Conjuration Damage, Cooldown, Moosel Speed, Damage Reduction, Clock Cannon. If you have any max of those three, I would recommend them. I just don't have the slot for the aspect of control. If you do, please use it. Another question. Do you think that you can manage this build with Temerity instead of the Damage Reduction? Burning heal passive, not spawning underneath the barriers while you refresh evade shield, max out Teramir shield, which feel really nice and running tier 60 to 90. Is the damage reduction a must for tier 100? 5 damage reduction plans is a must for tier 100. The heals isn't fast enough. You will need the hurt of the lion hurt to keep the seals maximum, but you trade too much damage or defend for temerities, so I don't think it's a good option for T100. But for T60 to 90, it's great for sure. Now we have a PvP question. Out of curiosity, how does this build to hold up against PvP? It's not as good as the firewall build for PvP as as superiority doesn't work when hitting players, but you need the mobs, you are god. I tried with some bros and I all lost to them 1v1. For a normal PvP zone, I achieved to win all classes, but they are just random players, not top world PvP. Please go to PvP section for more details. If you like my build and can make it more into PvP competition, please help me to improve it. Feel free to post your B PvP build link in the comment section. Now, Please enjoy some gameplay before we are going to alternative item, no unique version.
for the non-unit version, we use 50% CC spreading aspect for the chest with hurt of concolated in the ring to replace suppress and damage hurt. You can stun the whole screen in 5 seconds, so you don't need to worry much about defensive. But we need to replace the flame feeder clip with frostbite clip to have 13% reduced damage after being frozen, which will cover the loss of 20% damage suppress and hurt. With this height area stunning, you don't wor need to worry about the mana at all. We replace the occulus with aspect of control to increase our damage to maximum. Now, please enjoy some gameplay before we are going to the PvP section. I need time to fight. Out of the way, I need time to
Please. Take it back from them. Let it end. Welcome to PvP Spill. You can see that I just used Gen Lining with a player, and a player is counted as elite as well. When Gen Lining kills the player, we have 75% attack speed buff. I want to point out that Asu Versity doesn't work when hitting an elite or player like a boss to correct this mistake that I mentioned in the last video. I tried with some bros from PvP tournament and I all lost to them 1v1. For a normal PvP zone, I achieved to win all classes, as when you are near the group of mobs, your attack speed is crazy, but our nightmare build doesn't work with PvP 1v1. For normal PvP zone, you only need to swap 20% damage since press and hurt to hurt of calculated for making an attack stunning enemy every 150 mana span. Hydra is counted as an attack as well. So with our very fast attack speed, Gen Lining and Hydra both can stun enemies permanently. For example, if you catch a Hydra at 150 mana, that Hydra will stun the enemy every time each head hitting them. For 1v1, you need to swap the Barber Hurt amulet to Omni Power Hurt amulet. You also need to change Taurasha Hurt to Hurt of the Bruden for the survivability as well as avoid one hit KO. This is the mandatory Hurt for every tournament build. You need to adjust some skill points and Paragon points to match with Omni Power build as well. Please check my max row view in the description for more details. In this way, you can nuke the enemies when they are getting close to you. 
please use Hydra to zone out an enemy and wait the opportunity to jump in. Frost Nova and use Unstable Current. Look out the enemy with Omni Power Gen Lightning. You will have maximum 4 active Hydras and let you bust damage with Unstable Current. Please remember to use Flame Shield, Teleport and Oculus to get the best position.
Well done. I have more gameplays and videos in the private post. You can watch and enjoy those if you like more content. If you enjoy this and want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I need